Halloween, that time of year to celebrate the grim and gory, watch scary movies, dress in costume, and have an excuse to eat lots of candy. For Americans, Halloween is a time to indulge. For me, it's my favorite holiday. You can see here, these are my three skeletons. We have Indiana Bones, Boney Wan Kenobi, and Jack Shellington. I just love the atmosphere of the Halloween season. And also the 12 foot Home Depot skeleton. I mean, look at him, he's so handsome. But where did all of this come from? How did Halloween turn into the holiday that I know and love? Come with me for a trip to the underworld as we take a deep dive into the history of Halloween. The story of Halloween starts with the Celts, an ancient civilization of people that lived in Britain, Ireland, and Northern France. Much of their influence can still be seen in Britain and Ireland today. The Celts celebrated the festival of Samhain. This took place at the midpoint between the fall equinox and the winter solstice, when families would be harvesting their crops. At the end of the harvest, the Celts would join Druid priests in lighting a community fire. They would sacrifice cattle and take flames from the bonfire back to their homes to lay their own hearths. So how does this celebration have anything to do with Halloween? Well, the Celts also believed that this time of year was when the boundary between the living and the dead was its thinnest. Offerings were left outside of villages for fairies, and people would dress as animals or monsters so the fairies wouldn't kidnap them. It was also believed that their ancestors could cross back over during this time, and that druids could make predictions about the future with the heightened spiritual energy. If you think Samhain sounds similar to the Mexican El Dia de los Muertos, you'd be correct. However, El Dia de los Muertos has much different origins. El Dia de los Muertos came about through the mixing of Spanish and Aztec cultures. The Aztecs held celebrations for their goddess of death, Mexteca Cihuatl, who in Aztec mythology ruled over the souls of those going to the underworld, along with her husband, Miglán Tzcuitli. These festivals honoring the dead that the Aztecs held were absorbed into the Christian traditions brought over by the Spanish colonists. Samhain was also changed by invading foreign powers. By 43 AD, the Roman Empire had claimed much of the Celts' land, and they would rule them for the next 400 years. After the fall of the Roman Empire, however, the Middle Ages began and Samhain continued as a tradition in pagan communities across Europe. Families would light fires to protect their farms from fairies and witches, play games, and set off fireworks. They also started carving jack-o'-lanterns, which at the time were carved turnips or potatoes embedded with coal. These come from Irish folklore about a guy named Stingy Jack, who tricked the devil and now wanders on earth as a ghost with just a burning coal to light his way. This ghostly figure became known as Jack of the Lantern. Irish immigrants would bring the tradition over to America later and started using pumpkins, which are native to North America. The church, however, was not fond of Samhain. So in the 5th century, Pope Boniface moved Samhain to May and made it a day for celebrating all saints and martyrs. The fire festivals continued at their usual time of the year, though, not swayed by the Pope's tactics. So another Pope, Pope Gregory, tried a different method to end Samhain. Greg declared November 1st to be All Saints Day and November 2nd as All Souls Day. Neither of these fully did away with the traditional pagan traditions, though. In fact, All Souls Day was celebrated pretty similarly to Samhain. These All Souls Day and All Saints Day celebrations are what the Spanish would bring over to Mexico later. October 31st at this time, the night Samhain was usually celebrated, became known as All Hallows Eve. This comes from the Middle English word for All Saints Day, so it was All Saints Day Eve. And All Hallows' Eve is where it stayed for a while, with still with many of the original pagan traditions. These included dressing in costume, performing in exchange for food and money, giving out sweets, as well as celebrating the dead. During colonial times in the U.S., Halloween celebrations weren't common because of the mainly Protestant population in the Northeast. Halloween's connection to pagan traditions turned the Puritans off from the holiday, as anything perceived as witchcraft wasn't exactly revered in the region. However, in Catholic Maryland, they did celebrate All Souls and All Saints Day, which brought along with it All Hallows Eve. Halloween as we know it today started to come about in the 19th century, when Irish immigrants brought their traditions and folklore over to the States. Americans began dressing in costumes and going from house to house, asking for food and money. By the 1920s, Halloween had become especially popular among young people who wanted to cause some mischief. Things really ramped up during the Great Depression, with vandalism and violence being the chosen form of mischief for many people. So in the 1930s, a movement started to make Halloween more about community. After World War II with the baby boom, Halloween was all about the kids and the candy. Now that the war was over, sugar didn't need to be rationed anymore, and candy companies launched into advertising specifically for Halloween. While some mischief still prevailed, by the 1950s, Halloween had been turned into a community-based holiday. With more young children around, Halloween became a beloved tradition. Today in Ireland and Scotland, lots of traces of the original Samhain can still be seen in their celebrations. They hold parades, fire festivals, tell fortunes, and eat traditional foods. Halloween in Great Britain isn't too dissimilar to the US, with trick-or-treating, ghost stories, and parties. In the rest of Europe, though, Halloween looks much different. 
In Italy, for example, Halloween isn't a traditional holiday, although you may find some parties and nightclubs to wear a costume to on October 31st. But Italians also still celebrate All Saints Day and All Souls Day. On November 1st and 2nd, Italians leave chrysanthemums at the tombs and graves of the dead to honor them. Believing that the dead can walk among the living on these days, they also light candles for them in their windows and leave food out for them. Different regions in Italy also have other traditions surrounding the holiday, like giving gifts and candy to children and even carving pumpkins. In countries like Japan and South Korea, October 31st is more of an excuse for young adults to go out partying. However, celebrations of the dead are also held throughout the year in different Asian cultures. In China, one of these traditions is the Hungry Ghost Festival, which takes place in the seventh month of the lunar calendar. During this holiday, they perform ceremonies and leave food out to avoid the wrath of the ghosts of their ancestors. In October and Cambodia, they celebrate Pachumbin, where they bring food and other offerings to their ancestors. In African countries, you won't find much of a trace of the American Halloween, but different African cultures all have their own ways of celebrating and honoring the dead. One example of this is the Odo Festival, which is held every two years in the northern Igbo tribes of Nigeria. This festival has three stages. The first is the arrival of the dead, where they hold celebrations to welcome them back to the world of the living. In the second stage, the spirits stay with their living relatives for about six months, giving them plenty of time to catch up. In the last stage, they say goodbye to their deceased loved ones until they return at the next Odo Festival. And of course, El Dia de los Muertos is still the hottest ticket around for celebrations of the dead. Mexico is alight with festivals and celebrations on November 1st and 2nd. They leave offerings to their family members who have passed, known as ofrendas, both in cemeteries and in their homes. Guatemala holds a kite festival to honor their dead. They build giant, brightly colored kites and fly them in cemeteries, which comes from indigenous Mayan traditions. Modern customs have mixed with the ancient ones to create a unique and beautiful celebration of the dead. So as you can see, Halloween has come a long way and has many variations across the world. I encourage you to read more into these celebrations outside America because there are so many beautiful ways that other cultures honor the dead. And next time you leave candy out on Halloween for trick-or-treaters, maybe also leave out something for Grandma, just in case she stops by. Thanks for watching History of Anything. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this, and check out a complete list of sources used in this video in the description below.